I saw you die. Yeah, and now I'm a ghost. Can you dig it? <laughs> I mean, look at this. <laughs> Check it out. I saw you die. By the way, I did not sacrifice myself for you. I took a calculated risk. Still figuring out the rules here, but... See? It's so disappointing. Wait, Agatha. Yeah. The road. What about it? Did I make the road? Unlike your mother. Sorry. Wanda. You actually did something interesting. Hey, panelists, welcome back to the show. I'm Mark. And I'm Becky. And I'm Steve. And this is Panels the Pixels podcast. This is a spoiler-filled podcast about Agatha all along, episodes eight and nine, titled Follow Me, My Friend to Glory at the End and Maiden Mother Crone. Synopsis for episode eight is basically the end of the road. For episode nine, the truth of Agatha Harkness and the witches. Bum, bum, bum. <laughs> All right, I, I have to I have to admit something that I don't I don't know why it didn't even occur to me until watching episode eight, listening to the song as it's played multiple times in mm-hmm. these last two episodes that I never realized that the titles of most of the episodes are lines from the song. <laughs> I totally missed it. The whole time I'm watching I the show think until, I missed it too, until so. episode eight, and I was just like, hey, that's a line from the song. And I was like, wait a minute, so was that. And oh, so was that. And oh, okay, I get it now. It's they're all lines from the song. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And honestly, I, I did not make a correlation to what Disney does with their songs and rides. Mm. Think about it. The Pirates of the Caribbean, Pirates Life for Me. Yeah. Almost very similar to. The Witch's Road song. So Which Disney a lot about. that would be an interesting Disney. That would be an interesting Disney uh, uh, attraction, though, if they did an Agatha all along. <laughs> yeah, um, we have to go down the Witch's Road. You know, um, Mr. Toad's Wild Ride style. Um, <laughs> my feet would be burning because I had to go barefoot. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I don't think they'd make you take off your shoes. I don't think I so not. either. <laughs> But, uh, well, first impressions of both episodes as a whole. So uh, let's start with you, Becky. Episode eight was good. I didn't think it was great, but it was good. Um, I loved the usual suspects ending. I... All I could say is Billy is mm-hmm. Kaiser Sose. Um, <laughs> episode nine, I thought was great. Uh, I still think Patty Lapone's episode was the best of the season, yeah. but this one was good and it uh, didn't answer all of my questions, but it did give some good closure on things that were brought up throughout the series. Hmm. Steve. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you. Uh, episode eight. I, I, I'm watching it the second time, episode eight. I I liked it a little bit more than I think the first time because really, but once you watch episode nine, it just, it so overshadows eight, Mm -hmm. you know, in that, in that, what, in that the, the few beats we got in, in eight until the very end of the episode, of course, you know, the, the few beats we get um, are kind of like, everything's just pushing us to nine. And then when you watch nine, you go, Oh, okay. That makes sense. And so, uh, yeah, I'm with you eight. When I rewatched eight, I was just like, Oh yeah, this happened. Oh yeah. That happened. I remember this, this, this happening now. And, <laughs> and, Oh yeah, I guess that's kind of important. And, but then of course we get back everything in my brain. What rewatching on the second watch of episode eight was, I want to get to nine. I want to get to, to the second yeah. watch of nine, yeah, you know, but, because there was so yeah. much in nine, uh, but yeah, that's so that's for me. I'm the kind of the same way. Eight felt like I'm I'm kind of glad they put them together like this because I think if we had watched eight and then had to wait a week, it would have been there would have been a letdown. Oh, big time. Yeah. Yeah. And my my feeling was that yeah, it was they had to get to the end of the road. 
And then we finally get to episode nine, which is the reveal of Agatha, everything that had happened to her in her past, which is really cool. But I think Disney created this and decided to drop these two episodes right before Halloween. So that way everybody could watch it either that night or on Halloween together. Mm -hmm. Which makes sense. You know, it, it it is kind of witchy. It's kind of a Halloween kind of themed thing that they did. We did not get a Marvel Halloween show, but this was literally the Halloween show that we needed. So I think that's where it came from. Uh, I'm glad that we did get at the very end of The Witch's Road, at the very end of 8, and then we got the whole episode nine and it was a different take on what we knew of Agatha Mm -hmm. basically from WandaVision because we did get a little brief cue of what was going on with Agatha when she was burned alive by the coven at that point. But, but she was also sucking their energy at the same time. This gave a whole new treatment to the character, which is very different and gave us a little bit more insight. But in the end, we did get a different, very different Agatha in the end. Uh, the <laughs> We also said, listeners, spoilers. Obviously, this is spoiler full. So we might go back and forth between eight and nine because this is cumulative that we're discussing both episodes. But it was very interesting overall of how it was. And I think the seeds were always there. I think we just did not see them of how the ending would be and how it ended. But also leaving us on, guess what? Another, oh, cliffhanger. We don't know where it's going after this until we see a movie or another show or whatnot. <laughs> and then- but I'm okay with that because they gave us, they answered, they answered our question about his brother. They mm-hmm. answered our question about Nikki. They mm-hmm. an- they answered most of the questions that we were curious about. So. Yeah. Even if they don't, of course, you know they will, because there's still a vision something in the works. I'm yeah. sure they'll figure out how to 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 tie it all together. But I I was satisfied. I felt like they if they don't, I'm okay. Yeah, absolutely. I'm 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 with you. At the, I'm I'm torn by both both sides of that that argument because on one hand, I'm they wrapped it up really really well. Mm -hmm. And to where we don't need to know, we don't, I mean, this is, was kind of what I wanted to go into. My first kind of thing to talk about was not, was what they didn't, what they didn't give us in, in these episodes that we were kind of looking for. We were kind of looking for some sort of closure, some sort of um, Tommy coming back. We didn't get that. Uh, We, we get, we get kind of an idea that maybe there, there might, that Tommy might be out there because, you know, you have that, that scene uh, there at the end of or towards the end of eight, when the the kid is being is drowning, um, which that there's there's another show that had a very similar experience of a child being pushed into a a lake, completely different show, but it was just the same anyway of a, of a kid drowning that I really had flashbacks to that. I can't remember what the show was, but supernatural. You know, it, no, I don't remember what it was. It was, it was, it might have been, it might have been a, a, an episode of Supernatural that that did something like that. But it, it's regardless. The, the the point is, you know, we get this, we get this little taste of the possibility that that a child died in order for Tommy to take Clip. over that child, and we don't know, you know, we don't have any further explanation of that. We just have him saying, "Am I killing this child so that I can save my brother?" And then then he goes away. Yeah, then, yeah, but then, she says she says after sometimes, he's gone, she's like, yeah. no, sometimes boys just die. So I don't think just like with the the car accident, I don't think mm-hmm. 
he caused the car accident so that no, he could take no, over. I think it's right. just they right. find no, an I, opportunity. I, yeah, by no means am I blaming Billy for the death. What I'm saying is they don't give us any closure on whether that's what happened or not. Yeah, oh, so gotcha. we don't know. We don't see. We don't see the furtherance of that of of that scene with the mm-hmm. child who drowned. We don't know that makes sense. If, yeah. if Tommy in, it took over the body or not. So they could really they could go either way with that scene. Um, we never saw Wanda, um, you know, and maybe that's because they kind of gave us the closure on that that they said yes, Wanda is dead, you know, uh, hmm. yeah. or a version of Wanda is dead. But well, yeah, we, we, we have a really... possibility of Billy bringing her back. Who knows? But because that's what I'm of saying is his power. That's what I'm saying is it's the things we didn't get. That's what I'm saying. The things we didn't get. Yeah. That, that that is interesting to me is you know we don't even get. I mean, we get Agatha as a Force ghost. We don't even get Wanda as a Force ghost. You know, um, <laughs> there there would have been a great opportunity for them. You know, so so going. You know, uh, you know, um, in the future they could. They could do another TV show. They could do a movie, The Search for Tommy. I don't know. Um, or if they don't, that's fine, too. Kind of like Moon Knight. We're left with this idea that they, they could do something more with Moon Knight, or they might not. And either way, we're satisfied. It's I'd a like to put it out there to the universe and to Disney. And if they do this, I want royalties. But I would love to <laughs> see a Tommy season but it's they base it off of the who's Tommy, <laughs> the pinball wizard. <laughs> well, they they straight up took Wizard of Oz, yeah. and made it into Agatha. Mm-hmm. So why can't we do that? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I, I have to, I have to also bit on my second, my second watch. I did, I kind of got, I I listened to a couple of other, or I saw some posts about the eighth, the eighth episode, um, and some of the posters and things that were in Billy's oh, yeah. room. Um, that I didn't that upon after reading those articles, then when I watched it the second time, I actually caught some of those some of those posters. I finally did I did see the Buffy poster that's yep. on the wall, the once more with feeling uh poster is on the wall. You can prominently see it at least once or twice. Yep. Uh, there yeah, at the end I of the episode. Right away. Uh even though it's not really referenced at, at all, but the fact that unless you want to say the fact that Emma Caulfield was in that episode of Buffy. Ah, it is true. Uh, but <laughs> yeah. Is. So uh but I, I, I really love like you said uh Becky earlier about the whole Kaiser Soze of it of him, you know, stepping back and and looking at all these things and suddenly picking up the shoes, seeing the picture of the house on the wall, seeing, you know, seeing all these things and realizing that he created the road. And then we get that wonderful exchange between him and Agatha where he's like, did I kill, did I kill them? And, and he's like, Alice. And she's like, well, actually I killed Alice. And then he's yeah. like, <laughs> and Lilia is like, well, actually Lilia, you know, she took out the she seven made that choice. <laughs> like, made her made a choice and did that. And then he's like, but what up Mrs. Davis? She's like, who? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, like following that thread of the fact that, that, uh, that Agatha just doesn't care about anybody except herself. Uh, oh, oh, the gardening lady. Yeah. I guess you did kill her. So, <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's so sad. <sighs> I'm glad that um, Jen found her magic. I thought that was a great twist that it yes. was Agatha who bound her. And I thought it was so funny that she was just like, I was just doing it for money, you know, yeah, just, for money. I needed <laughs> coins or whatever she puts it. <laughs> And it's like, gosh, she's so heartless sometimes. Um, but I love the Samir, her acting, both when uh, mm-hmm. it starts and, Lydia, you know, Lydia or Lilia shut the door and she's very upset. She beautiful acting in the same mm-hmm. when she uh, got her powers back. And then when she crawls up out of the ground and flies away i know i read some of the when i was leaving feedback for a couple of other podcasts i saw where a lot of people were disappointed with jen's just flying away how is she how does that mean she's the path forward which is like they really didn't talk about things that were missing i think that is one of them yeah, they didn't yeah. explore that. They didn't, ex- and they didn't explore the the binding. You know, it's it was a it, the second time I watched it, I finally I kind of caught a little bit that there's that flash of some doctor that Jen talks about. 
Mm-hmm. And yes. she does, I don't know how, I don't know how he bound me. And then, and then, you know, Agatha makes this comment about Boston and that's how Jen realizes that Agatha was the one who bound her. Cause she's like, I never, you know, told you anything about Boston. How would you know that unless you're the one who bound me? And then, you know, like you said, Becky, we get this wonderful scene of Agatha, you know, I didn't even know who I was binding. I was just doing a spell for money. You know, right. she didn't even know it was Jen. <laughs> So yeah, so I, I thought I thought that was another missed missed up missed beat that they could have explored a little bit with Jen. You know, maybe they just thought it was going too long. I mean, it was only it was only thirty seven minutes, so they they could have played with four or five more minutes there to give us a little a little yeah. deeper insight into Jen. I think, but ah, missed opportunities. It is, yeah. There there are certain issues. Uh, it, it's so funny too because of. You know, in, in the comics, Tommy Maximoff uh, reincarnates in the body, uh, reincarnates in the body of Tommy Shepard, an unruly teenager who is constantly sent to juvenile detention centers after developing a speed-based power and destroying his school. And then Tommy is sent to a high security prison. However, the Young Avengers arrive to recruit him in their ranks, and that's when Tommy reunites with his reincarnated brother, twin brother Billy. AKA, as we know, Wiccan. <clears throat> Once in the Young Avengers, Tommy adopts the superhero moniker Speed. But here's a good question about uh, Billy. Does he come back? Uh, you know, Tommy's reincarnated body is still Billy's twin brother, which means that the MCU's uh, grown up Tommy could be also be played by Joe Locke because they're twins. Yeah, but they but, weren't identical. They were never identical. They were not so. identical. So, but the I fact, mean, I guess they, they if they could twist. But I it. mean, the, the character would have to die again in order for the, the for them uh, to be identical. Yeah, that would. Yeah, that, that would seems be like a very little bit hard a, to explain. Uh, exactly, yeah, it seems but, like a little bit of a stretch. But it, I mean, I see, I see where you're going. It's it's a possibility. But it's, it's a possibility. It's, they could twist it because Billy is so manipulative. Because even Agatha herself states that. You're just as powerful, if not more powerful than your mother, because you created this whole thing. I like and, that yeah. that was her tell, too, that she knew that was, you know, that was the tell that he created all of this. And, yeah. you know, only a Maximoff would be this dramatic. I like that. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. How that came yeah. out. She saw but all the he, calling signs. And then yeah, but he was more creative, but he was more creative than one. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so. exactly. He was more ma- imaginative. Yeah, uh, over it. Yeah. So speaking of Billy and uh, okay, when Rio and Agatha are having a conversation, and before I forget, because I didn't write this down, but see, when you were talking about things that were missing, mm-hmm. the there was the fight scene between Rio and Agatha mm-hmm. was so disappointing to me because of one reason, and it's when Rio shouted, "Why won't you love me?" Yet we get zero, 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 zero history other than, well, her son got sick and died and Rio took him. That we knew yeah. there was something before that. What? Yeah, that's obviously, again, that's that's going into episode nine. There's a little bit, there's definitely a missed opportunity because you have that kind of throwaway line. Yes. Where, where Agatha says to her, don't take him away from me, my love. Yeah, okay, so that yeah. Means- and I don't. I don't think she was talking about the boy. I think she was talking about Rio. Yeah, Rio. She and was. was, and that was establishing that they had some sort of relationship prior to her getting pregnant or becoming Correct. pregnant, whatever the, yeah. and and having the baby and Rio taking it. So you're right. I mean, it's a totally a missed a missed thing there of showing us that background. And we had talked about. I think we talked about that the last last time we recorded that yes. we wanted to see mm-hmm. what was their background, what was their love story. Like, are they going to show us that? And they didn't. You it know, just we, really cheapened they, that they, whole. They kind of overstepped thing. it and left it out. And like I said, listeners, uh, obviously we mentioned death. We know that Rio is death, and Agatha had this love affair with death, and then obviously she got, you know, pregnant with yeah. Nicholas yeah. Scratch. Right. But the thing is, is that <clears throat> with that. You know, it's it's kind of shadowing the book iteration of what 
you know, the, uh, the Marvel comic universe had done, which was literally, uh, death was being, um, kind of, I mean, but the, the, I, I, I know, I, I, I mean, I see that you're going to go, I'm just going to go into a little bit of comic yeah, talk, but it yeah. Just, yeah, it just, it, they've completely gone, but yeah, that's yeah, off the rails. Go ahead, explain. Yeah. 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 Well, my question go ahead. though, that before I went off on that tangent, sorry, I sidetracked everyone, but <laughs> Rio, when she's talking to Agatha in the episode eight mm-hmm. on the road, before they meet up with Jen and Billy, she says, the, she meant she says the son of Scarlet, the Scarlet Witch, has taken a second life. Mm-hmm. Who? I think I, she was. Talk, I think she was referring to William, the the William body that he took. I think correct. That's his I, only body, right? That's the only you know, person he who who is the I, second I, because Tommy. This hadn't happened with Tommy yet. So the, the no, she was talking about Billy. When she was saying the son of, of the Scarlet Witch, she was referring. I think he said okay, a this second is my, life, so that would mean he right. two people but, died. But I think, but I think she was talking about Billy. I think she was saying that Billy, hmm. Billy Maximoff should have died, but instead of dying, he took over William, whatever's body. That was his oh. second life. Oh, okay. That was that was that was where he broke. He broke the chain. Was where that he shouldn't have done. Was that he shouldn't have taken that second body to and and and, and reanimate basically reincarnated himself in that second in that second body when that body died because that body was supposed to because remember she's all about the bodies she doesn't care about the soul she doesn't care this is this is the impression this is my perspective she doesn't care about the soul she doesn't care she cares about the the body yeah. or at least that's what she said and so when 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 billy took over william's body that was one he took that away from Rio. Mm-hmm. And so that's what she's saying is that's where it was broken. She needs to have a death. Somebody needs to die in order to replace Billy. Yeah. Billy. Yeah. Right. right. And she's saying he, I mean, he's going to do it. And he's going to do it with Tom. And, and she's saying that, no, I can't let, I can't let him stay because then he'll do it with Tommy also. And he'll take another life away from me mm-hmm. by reincarnating Tommy. What I didn't get though, was the whole thing about how, he has to come willingly, or yeah, if he doesn't he come willingly, yeah. then, what? then he's then he's just going to reincarnate another. He's going to find another body, body to dead, jump into. Yeah, jump that's into. One of my notes too. It didn't make any sense. Yeah, yeah it was I, really that was, confusing. That was that whole thing of 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 him having to come willingly, and then the then the fact that she's willing to accept Agatha instead of Billy. Was seemed kind of a cop out to me. Hmm. It seemed kind of a, of a okay. I'm just going to take Agatha instead of Billy, and then okay, Billy, you can go now. And then you know the very next episode, we have Agatha's ghost saying, "Well, let's go find Tommy." And you know, death's nowhere to be to be seen to stop them to go. Hey, wait a minute! <laughs> I've already told you you can't do this. Why are you trying to go? Uh, so yeah, there, there's definitely some things that were left hanging that. Who knows what will what, what we'll, we'll get? get. Uh, I, honestly, I liked. Yeah, I liked the fight though. The the fight scene. Oh, the for, visuals is, were incredible. Oh yeah, yeah between. When, but I'll when, tell you this: the thing that annoyed me is we had this beautiful episode with Lilia, and Lilia is imparting her wisdom on everyone, and her advice to Agatha is: when she calls you a coward, hit the deck. That's all we got. So yeah, when she called, ooh, she called me a coward. Hit the deck. You and still some, die. There was yeah. no. That was so disappointing to me. Yeah, yeah. The payoff. I, I, they the set payoff that for that up, was, and I expected so much more. Yeah, the payoff for that was not was was not worth what what they gave us. I didn't. I, I agree. I totally agree with you on that. That payoff was not. Uh, when I watched it the second time, I was like, "That's oh, just duck, just basically oh, okay." And then this. Cardor flies see. over you instead of <laughs> and, but something you're still, magical like you said, happening and you're saved. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, yeah. So, <laughs> but yeah, that's, uh, and, and I mean, and Aubrey Plaza looked great. Oh yeah. Even, she yeah. Is even with the dead. Is an evil. So hot. I'm going to tell you too, in episode nine, Catherine Hahn looked 
gorgeous while she was having that baby. And I don't know how mm-hmm. you can make having a baby look beautiful, but I, I just kept looking at her like, you are stunning. But I digress. I'm sorry. She did look very hot, Steve. <laughs> Yeah, she was both both of them the, the, both of them in this in this series have been great yeah you know, i mean yeah. i've been i've been in love with Aubrey plaza for i don't know how long for since before uh well since parks and rec i think is probably when yeah, it really, i was gonna say <laughs> <laughs> That's the only time i remember parks, seeing her parks and rec and and then uh then of course she was in legion and she's done a couple of other things that i haven't watched i didn't watch the child's play series or the movie that she was in but i know that she did some of that stuff too so yeah do you watch uh, white lotus yes no, yeah. white lotus she's great in also yeah yeah uh but to get back to what i was stating in comics reference re- regarding death <laughs> just so people know uh in the comics as we all know <clears throat> comic book based thanos was trying to grab death's attention as a love interest by destroying half the lives in the world or the universe. And that's why he did what he did with the gemstones and everything. That was the whole point. But in this iteration, instead of Thanos, the love interest at this point in the com well in the show is literally Agatha now. So I think it's kind of pointed directly. So it makes kind of sort of sense but where did death go is my question. Just like you, Becky is like, where did she go after this? Is she still around as Mephisto? Cause we were promised a lot of things through uh, things that were leaked and, uh, and mentioned. And we knew that Sasha Baron Cohen was supposed to play Mephisto and he was supposed to make an appearance. <clears throat> Maybe this stuff was uh, probably filmed and then edited. But my feeling is, okay, they gave us something that gave us a cliffhanger, which is interesting. So maybe there's a movie that explains this at a certain point and we get this continued saga or in another show that Disney's going to do. But right now with what Disney has slated, the only thing we have going for us is Daredevil Reborn. That's it. And... uh I'm I'm assuming we're going to get something different in the near future because I don't think Feige is going to be like, well, we, we left that unwritten, but we also left, like you stated before, Steve, when it came to uh, Moon Knight. Mm-hmm. We have, yeah, there's a lot of his. stuff they've left. Yeah. There's a lot of stuff they've left out that, uh, that we, yeah. were, you know, are, we are we going to get quick flashbacks in a particular movie and be like, Oh, this is what happened. And it's like yeah. do a real quick fast forward. And then it's like, here we are now. And yeah, then, I don't, no. I don't think so. I think they're big about moving forward. Um, so I, I, you know, I don't, I don't they know. Want I, us I, guessing, I think, uh, yeah. I think that's literally what it is. I would really like to know of what happened to Ralph Boner after mm-hmm. that. And, and if, did he become, you know, Peter Maximoff after a certain point. Uh, that no, he's kid. in Paramus. He's Paramus doing his one-man show. He's doing his one-man show. Oh, that's right. He left We, we know that already. There's he's nothing about Peter Maximoff. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, are we, are, is that all on that topic? Pretty much. Uh, the like You already touched upon what I liked about it, and Steve, you mentioned it too, about the posters and, and, and Billy's yeah, and, and then the uh, the shoes, like the actual, like they're like shoe um, mm-hmm. statues. He had sta- he had statues of the Wizard of Oz. Mm-hmm. Uh, there was a Rocky Horror Picture Show poster as well as uh, the Buffy. Yeah, uh, there was a carry. There was a carry poster on the wall. Yeah, there was uh, there was several things. You know, there was the picture of the house. There was the Lorna Wu. Um, album. He finds the, the Ouija clue, board or the Ouija board. Yeah, the Ouija board. Yep. He, he finds the the Ouija board. All the all the things that point to him realizing putting together. Uh, I love that that Kaiser Soze putting that together. That it's me. I'm the one who uh, did it all. You know, to <laughs> to look at it and go, wow. Uh, and but it's it's it, what's great is unlike the usual suspects, it's it's not an un. Uh, this isn't a uh, a bad narrator telling a story it's a it's a it's a story being created that we got to play we got to see play out which was really really cool yeah yeah 
The, the, the one thing I really did enjoy out of the both episodes is we go through the whole story of Agatha in episode nine of how she created that song for her son. And we find out death really extended his life more than what we thought. We thought right away he was going to be dead at birth. And then he grew up to be a child Mm-hmm. And she brought him up on these certain things, but it was a way for her to take witches' powers. Yeah, it was just at, a con. It was a con, yeah. a whole I con. Love, how and, brilliant yeah. is that? Yeah, I love that reveal where when he's asking those all her all those questions, and she's like, "No, the song was the con." Yeah, and she even admits, "I was going to kill them all in my base." Like when he talks about how he's mad, he's he's upset that he killed them all, and she's like, "No, you saved one of them because I was going to kill them all on day one in my yeah. basement." You know, and she's like, you saved, you saved a life. So it wasn't actually the fact that now I guess you could question whether Mrs. Davis actually had power that would have been able to give her any power. Uh, I don't think so. (laughs) Regardless, regardless, the point is she was, she was planning to kill all of them on that, that first day in the basement, no matter what. And so the fact that he saved, he, he allowed Jen to live actually says that he saved a life instead of. And it's, it was so cool to me that. They went back to that moment and you, it confirmed all the questions. Has she really ever walked the road? Is it, did she walk a different road mm-hmm. where, you know, <laughs> we knew she wanted their powers because as soon as Lilia was ready to blast her, she's like, nope, this is what you want. You're not getting it. So yeah. it was just like a yeah. good closure moment on on that and I I thought it was I thought Nikki was great. I it was so even in her she's still killing witches for power, but to watch her love that boy mm-hmm. and to see that side of her, I I thought Catherine Hahn i I've said it every episode, <laughs> but the way she can transition from one thing to the next, you know, just like that. It's, I loved that story. And when he's born and she says that little witch is, or that little poem. And she's like, but you, I made from scratch. I was just like, Oh, Um, you're killing me. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I thought that was, it was great to see that, that, uh, that the whole mother maiden, the whole, uh, what was it? Maiden mother crone play Mm -hmm. out right there in front of us and uh was was great to see yeah i liked when she was going after the witches and it the big reveal that she's just killed them year after year you know taking yep. their powers yeah the century way, after century basically yes, you could see the time through the characters with like her the costume 50s mm-hmm. 60s then with like the 80s decades. and then yeah. with every decade and I thought it was pretty cool because at the very end, she's got a, like a leather jacket on. And and at the very beginning, it's kind of like more like very much original to what she was. Mm-hmm. But you see it in the in the costuming and everything. And I thought that was really it was done very well. And the fact that, you know, it was all a straight con, including the song itself. Mm-hmm. And then even the sun was, was utilized. But that precipitated into his own death for the fact that he disappeared out of the pub where she was because she was playing. I don't know who this child is. And then he was like, Oh, my mother, blah, blah, blah. And then he runs out and then she goes looking for him and he can't, she can't find him. And then that's, that's literally what precipitates. And she basically had him longer than she thought she would have. Mm-hmm. And now she feels like that was taken away from her as a mother. I think that's where the whole love for Billy comes from at the end. As oh, hundred percent. She says it that so. you know that's why it's when you say things like that. That's yeah. It reminds when, you know, her. You of remind Nicholas. me of him. Yeah. So it really it answered the question of why she was so so protective of him. Um, yeah. Well, it's so wonderful that idea, just the idea of the two of them going off together, you know, when he says my spirit guide, you know, and, and, and she's like, two. so yeah, coven two. And, and, and he's, you know, she says, well, you know, I tend to kill 
all of my covens and he goes well so, so do, do I. I you know <laughs> so it's kind of like well this coven one's already dead so this you know but yeah I, I love that whole montage going back to that that the montage of when when that you know when when rio takes uh nick away no, away from her and she's there humming the song and that young witch finds her and goes oh you know the song and we realize that however long it's been this song has now circulated out beyond agatha Correct. and has, mm-hmm. has grown yeah. into a life of its own and has has got its own lore behind it at this point so it's been hundreds of years that this song has been out there and this witch or hundred however long this witch knows about it and and so we see that first that first opportunity that Agatha realizes that, oh, yeah, we've got the first thing we've got to do is get a coven. And mm-hmm. then you get that coven together and this, they finish the song and she starts to bait them by calling them pathetic and calling them names and makes them all attack her. Where's and then we the get that, door? Yeah. And then we get that montage of all the other covens that she killed as she as she started to egg them on. And we we get to the flashback in the basement where she starts to do that, and Billy stops her by running in because the door appears. Yes, you know, and and suddenly this is all changes for her because she's never seen an actual door appear. She's like, yeah, what, that's wait, exactly, what? 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah. So suddenly I she's like, this thing through. I don't know what the mm-hmm. hell is coming after me now. And on top of that, uh, with the uh, you, you saying with the attack, uh, the attacking Billy was the what it, they said it was he was the second person to survive the attacking with his powers or giving the powers and not dying from it. Yeah, yeah, well, there, she stopped. Yeah, yeah she, she stopped in, in episode eight. She she stops. You know, he says to her, "Don't take it all," and then he starts to attack her, and she stops herself at some point. You know, and has then has enough power that she's able to fight Rio there in episode eight, but she still ends up again. It ends up being fruitless because she ends up dying anyway. But yeah, yeah, there's that that moment when Billy says when Billy offers her his power. You know, he looked super says, cool flying in too. Oh yeah, he did. He looked like his mother basically, Wanda, mm-hmm. and but with different because he's got what, what was it blue instead of mm-hmm. instead yeah, of blue magic uh, red. Of, and then, of course, Agatha's purple. Mm-hmm. I liked where, going back to the fight, you know, typical Agatha, she acts like she's going to sacrifice herself for him. And then she's like, eh, take him, put my yeah, yard back him. together. <laughs> yeah. And then he just asked that simple question, is this what happened to Nikki? And it's like... uh just that mama switch flips yeah, it, and she yeah, snap. I Boom. don't care for I mean, I'll watch Catherine Hahn and Aubrey Plaza make out all day long, but <laughs> I don't the only thing I could think of as to why that's how Agatha did it is because early in that first episode, Rio says she can't or Agatha says that Rio can't kill her. So I guess Agatha had to go and basically take death into herself. Yeah, I I think she what, what she was saying she, she sacrificed to, herself. I think is what it was. To well, death. but the way she did it, it wasn't like Rio stabbed her and now she's dead. She went and kissed her, and then she takes she turned the black cloud or whatever is around her, and then she dies. Yeah, I, I think it's. I couldn't figure out why that was the de- the way she died. The kiss of death was it supposed to be like a kiss of death kind oh, of thing? Oh, um, I, I can't think believe is I what, didn't think that is, is what she's what she's getting at there. Was she gave her the because I was I was the same way in the second watch. I was like, hmm. so how did she so die? What? I was like, thank you. Can we get that on loop? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, um, but yeah, no, I, it wasn't on the second watch that I was, I, cause remember, cause Aubrey Plaza, the first thing she real says is, well, we're going to, we're going to kill you by the death of a thousand cuts. Well, then she gets her power back and she heals up. Mm-hmm. And so when in the second time I watched it, I'm going, so how did she die? And I go, Oh, she kissed death. That and is so, so smart. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so I, I think it's so much better now. <laughs> I think that's yeah. So uh and then and then of course, you know, Billy Billy has that moment where he says, but what does he tell her to do when she's a, when he's trying to banish her? As mm-hmm. and yeah. that's another scene that's kind of that's kind of crazy from episode nine, that he kind of turns on a dime there 
after she knocks the locket away because at first he's trying to banish her, mm-hmm. you know, and he says, I don't care what you do. You've got to leave, go take uh Rio's toxic grip in your hand. I've got or, it. Or, oh, go ahead. Yeah. Time to, time to go towards the light Rio's toxic embrace or wherever else it is. You're supposed to go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's like, there, there's that he was and then, angry. Yeah, and then and then she knocks the locket away, and I don't know was it because when she knocked the locket away, he realized. I, I don't know. Well, it broke the spell. Mm. That it broke the tension of him trying to because you know it broke the the seal, mm-hmm. and I think because didn't he scream at her? Why won't you go? And she says because I'm afraid. To right, face of him. him. She doesn't and want to that's face Nicholas. When right. He's like, he his guard goes down because he realizes she can't face her son. Mm-hmm. In the afterlife. That's what so, okay. I took out of it. Okay. I took yeah. something else out of that, but okay. What'd you get? What'd you get? The devil himself. Because she's evil. <laughs> so that would be Mephisto. But I think that's something that was probably left for us to think and ponder on. So it could be, it could go either way. So the writers could do whatever they want, (laughs) (laughs) but that's just my thoughts. I I could be completely wrong, but I I mean, maybe it could be either one. Uh, Like I said, I'm with Becky. I thought she was referring to Nicholas, but maybe she didn't want to just didn't want to face the afterlife period. Yeah. You know, um, but you know, I think the fact that it was the locket and the locket had his hair in it, and that was what um, you know uh, reference what to. completed, and that's what yeah. completed the trial in in episode eight was when she was able to bury the the hair and make it grow, you know, because that's what that was the other kind of confusing thing about episode eight was when they wake up in that room and Jen says, "Oh, this is my basement. Yep. This is my basement," as in Jen's basement, and I was just like, "You have." Cat, you have cadaver drawers. I thought in your... Agatha said that. I thought Agatha too. Oh, okay. Maybe, maybe that was Agatha. But it looked it... different from Agatha's basement from what we remembered from WandaVision, from if you before. recall that. Yeah, because, well, then Jen well, says these different. are grow lights. Yeah, and, because it... it was part of the trial. So it looked, plus, remember, this is Billy's imagination. True. Yeah. Okay. It and looked like yeah, something out of when she went busting out. She was in her backyard. Yeah, so exactly. Okay, Agatha's. so it was her base, her basement. Okay. okay. Yeah, so but that makes, it looked that like something sense. out of Star Trek, though, when they were in there yeah. at that point. And with um, the and that was a, we, yeah, that was a dandelion seed that was behind Nikki's hair. That's what she okay. planted and made grow with her tear. Okay, that's what I was trying to figure out. Okay, that was so there was a it was a seed that was mm-hmm. in the locket mm-hmm. with yep. the hair. Okay. Yeah. Got it. Now, now I'm tracking. Okay. Uh, just to give everybody and listeners a, a little insight on the comics based upon Agatha when how she dies. Agatha Harkness dies at least twice in the comics. The first time through Nicholas Scratch sending Agatha to a stake for allegedly betraying her community. And Agatha later comes back to life and begins training Wanda Maximoff. So not long after Agatha believes Agatha betrayed her for keeping the true nature for her twin se- children secret and kills her, meaning Wanda. Uh, however, Agatha returns as a ghost and guides Wanda through the witch's road in the comic books. So we're getting a little reminiscence and segues That's from cool. the comics mm, yeah. into the show itself yeah. or the, what the MCU is doing. So there, there's a little uh, fine tuning and rearranging, but it works in the sense of, I really think it works better with Billy at this point. And I'm looking forward to if we get, if Billy could get Tommy back. You know, and maybe possibly who knows what this whole vision story or vision quest, who knows whatever they're calling it now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I've heard, I've heard all the sorts of different rumors about what they've got going on for vision. You know, who knows what it's going to be. I liked the visuals when she, when she died and she turned into the dirt and those really pretty purple and yellow flowers came up. 
I thought that they so many great visuals. Yeah, and I liked it in episode nine when Billy comes back to the house. You mm-hmm. know that he see that we see that grave still there on yes. the on the thing, and, and then of course he makes the headstone. Yeah. At the, at the end of the episode was 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 great to have that uh, that remembrance of Alice and uh, Sharon and uh, Lilia. So yeah, that was sweet. Well, that's all I had. Any uh, on my notes and thoughts, but uh, do you guys have anything else you want to offer? Yeah, I'm trying to think if there was anything else that uh, that came up that was uh, was of interest, whether it episode eight or nine. Um, I like the opening. Uh, I was concerned when we saw Alice because I was like, oh, no, here we go. They're going to revive all the characters. Mm-hmm. I don't think it really fit in the whole scheme of things. It was a little out of place, but mm-hmm. it was still cool to see Alice and that, you know, she she makes the comment of, you know, that's all the time I have. Mm-hmm. And it mm-hmm. just kind of foreshadows the next well, episode where Nikki's or Agatha's like, no, I need more time. Yeah. Well, I love, I love the line that Rio gives her where she says, well, you were a protection witch. And Alice you says, yeah, Agatha. So you, you died protecting someone like you, you died fulfilling <laughs> your mission. Yeah. You know, well, no, you died, but you died fulfilling what your your purpose in life was so it's it's one of those really cool things to be to, to, to have that idea of and I, I i never heard them mention that she's a protection which i hadn't, I hadn't caught that earlier so the fact that that uh, that real points out the fact that you're a protection witch who died protecting someone that yeah. i thought was just I, I thought that was very point i'm glad i'm glad i had the opportunity to mention it because that that it that stood out to me because i'm someone who's always my I don't know. That's something I've always liked is, is the idea of protecting, protecting people. That's so. Yeah. It's pretty cool. Yeah. I think that's all I've got except for just, you know, the looking forward to it's, it's kind of unfortunate that if Disney follows the um, way they've done things in prior (laughs) <laughs> shows i mean except for wandavision we got this spinoff so you know maybe we'll get uh something to further this story along yeah but, uh if, if disney uh, doesn't do that uh that's fine too because i i think it's i i like the idea of tommy and uh force ghost i'm gonna call her that all the time now force ghost agatha <laughs> uh out there uh looking for tommy so well yeah well the think about that steve um we didn't get a continuation of um, Falcon and the Winter Soldier, right? We're getting mm-hmm. the new Captain America 4 movie, which is going to continue on a saga with Sam. Yeah. But we get the Thunderbolts, which actually does continue on from that saga about Bucky. So yeah, Bucky and the uh, – um, what's the other guy? The um... – Oh, why is his Agent name is- Carter? Yeah, no, no, not Agent Carter. The other Captain America. The other. Um, uh, oh, it's Agent America or something yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah, whatever they're calling him. Yeah, Wyatt yeah. Russell, uh, Kurt Russell's son. Wyatt Russell, yeah. his character's character. And uh, yeah, yeah, so that's a continuation what- from Falcon and the Winter Soldier, which is a continuation on from the Captain America stuff, which, yeah, so it, it, we're getting some of that kind of thing. And so made, and we did get a Loki season too. So, you know, we might get some furtherance of this story somewhere along the line. Wrong. We might get a, like some sort of resolution at a certain point, a chunk in a movie somewhere or a more elaborate adaptation later mm-hmm. on down the road. Yeah. Uh, I, I think it's because Disney had to restructure everything. And this was in the midst of that. So they might return to that within certain junctures within either a movie or a show. So keep in mind, listeners, it's not the end, but it might be longer than we thought because I think Kevin Feige and Disney overall is looking to literally finish up the multiverse saga of what's going on first and then putting in certain key moments in movies that they already started and had in progress at that time. And then once Secret Wars ends, guess what? We'll have a whole new Marvel, and it might incorporate these characters as well. 
So it might mm-hmm. be the new Avengers for all we know, who knows, but um, those are my thoughts. That's where I'm thinking it's going because yeah. I'm still looking forward to the future of what they give us. I'm still looking forward to Daredevil Reborn. We've gotten images of John Berthold as uh, Punisher. We got uh, Charlie Cox as Daredevil. Uh, we just got, oh, another villain that's in um, Daredevil Reborn uh, from the comics, but I'm not going to talk about that. So you guys have to look for that for yourself. Anyhow, uh, but we also have, um, like I said, the new Captain America movie, the Thunderbolts, and then uh, everything else that we're getting from Sony itself, too, because we got Craven the Hunter coming out. Venom 3 already came out. And what else? Uh, there, there's a few others. And then they, they had made announcements about Spider-Man 4. Uh, that definitely will be coming out in 2026, everybody. So, sorry. It's a bit delayed. <laughs> but as far as Marvel is concerned, they're getting their stuff. We're going to get a Superman movie and everything else when it comes to DC. And uh, we we still have a lot of content out there. I don't know about all of y'all, but I know Becky's been watching Penguin. So, so, so good. I can't <laughs> say enough about this show. Amazing. Okay. Yeah, I haven't checked it out yet. But it's on my list, but just Do haven't it tomorrow. had a chance. You could easily binge watch the show. A hundred, yeah, yeah, on Max or wherever you get it's, it. It's it. Oh, it's just brilliant. Yeah, it's I. Chris, I Christine I, Milioti. Oh yeah, plays Sophia Falcone. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, she's I'll rocked try. my no, world. No spoilers, I'll, everybody. I'll try. <laughs> I'll try. She's, I'll rocked try. My, she's rocked my world. I'll I'll try. That's that's the actress who played the mother on How I Met Your Mother. So yes, yes, yes. it is. Yeah. That, yeah. Sorry, I'm still bitter about that show too. Yeah. That's another You're that's a whole other that's a whole other rant. Alone. That's a that's a whole other rant. So but I, I won't I won't try to I won't let my dislike of that show dis- make note of that me. though. Penguin, Steve, because so. one of my podcast episodes is going to be crappy series <laughs> TV show endings. So okay. Okay. keep well, keep that, yeah. keep hey, that hey, hey, keep me in mind. On keep the me back in burner. Mind. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> keep Keep in mind, though, with how you met your mother, William Zapka got his vengeance back, reclaiming his right to be the hero of the Karate Kid because of Barney Stinson. <laughs> okay. I don't remember that. You don't I, remember that? Because they invited Ralph I... Macchio to uh, uh, Barney's birthday party he goes you're not the hero of karate kid i didn't ask for you and then william zapk is in a, a clown outfit and he watch, goes no and he takes it off and he's in a gi and there he is yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I haven't watched that show so i haven't watched it in you forever, didn't so. oh you gotta watch I, that I, I haven't watched it i haven't watched this in it mark because i'm i'm as already mentioned i'm bitter about it so okay okay watch that episode make you happy <laughs> no it won't about karate kid. He's like, no, I will not. <laughs> no, I'm good with Cobra Kai. I'm good with Cobra Kai. It's coming back. So was, you know, yeah, that's coming back he, too. He got, his, he got his in in Cobra Kai. So that is true. To, he didn't need to step into How I Met Your Mother. If Barney Stinson <laughs> shows up in Cobra Kai, and that would be funny. Then we might have some redemption. Thing. Yeah, yeah that would be go. hilarious. There you go. <laughs> and PH needs to come back in Cobra Kai. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fundraising Cobra Kai or. Miyaki Do Karate. <laughs> All right. I, I think we covered the episode as a whole and we digress a little bit, which is so funny. But yeah, uh, let's move on to feedback. And we got hey, some feedback, right? I have quotes. Oh, you got oh, quotes? Oh, yeah. Move Get, on. Your quotes. No, I have quotes. Get your quotes in. Get your quotes <laughs> in. Steve still stole a couple. I'm kidding. I'm <laughs> totally kidding. Um, so when... Teen and Jen are walking the road and they're talking about Agatha and Teen says, so Agatha's ex is death. And Jen says, that also makes sense. And Teen says, how did they even meet? And Jen says, over corpses, I imagine. Uh, Agatha poking at Jen's 
being Jennifer Kale, and she says, please, your last name is a vegetable, the worst kind. It's like <laughs> swallowing a doily. <laughs> and a uh, the neighbors, when all the storm is happening, and they're just like, oh, is this happening again? That was a fun moment. Yeah. And I, I just like that last line when they bust out of the basement. Let's go find Tommy. Yep. Yeah. That's it. That's Thank all you, you got. Go. Okay. Steve, you have any more or no? Nope. That's that. I said all the ones that I had. Uh, cool. I didn't have any. I figured you guys had them all. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I'm going to have something. Yeah, I know that. Uh, all right. Well, I guess we can move on to fe- uh, feedback now. So uh, we got some feedback and you grabbed it from Facebook, right? I did. It's from uh, actually from episode seven. So my apologies, Laura, that we missed it for the for last week. But um, Laura Willie Swink, Swink says, my daughter and I have been watching together and we definitely feel like this is the best episode yet. And I completely agree. I think it was the best one of the series. We are both bigger fans of Hayao Miyazaki. Did I say that right? Yeah. And Studio Ghibli mm-hmm. than we are of Disney. And sometimes, though we enjoy Disney shows, we sometimes feel they are too, quote unquote, Disney-fied. And mm-hmm. despite the fact that we had some Maleficent and evil witch cosplay in this episode, it felt much more like a Miyazaki than Disney. It was surreal, dark, and beautiful. Lilia's end was the bittersweet stuff of a Ghibli film, and Agatha's coven is finally feeling like a true sisterhood, uh-huh. just as all the witches are dropping like flies. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Laura, again, that, for yeah, thank you, thank you Laura, so much for that. Uh, yeah, that's that's th- th- again that just reinforces the moment when we have Jen flying away. That was so so excellent just to see her survive yeah. this this whole thing because we know that none of the other covens. Uh, survived, so or had survivors. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and maybe that's well, our like, path forward: is to go find a new people. coven and there you go, grow magic yeah. or something. Yeah, 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 that'd be great. We'll see. All right. Well, I think that about covers everything that we had for Agatha all along for episodes eight and nine, the finale of this season. So we're at the point in the podcast of where else can listeners hear you? So Becky? I can be heard here on Panels to Pixels podcast and also on Adrenaline Cinema podcast. And uh, please, everyone out there, check out my new podcast, What's On Tonight, where my friend Mandy and I are currently covering the final season of What We Do in the Shadows. We can be found on Spotify and YouTube under Pirate Corpse Entertainment. And you can check out our Facebook page by just simply searching what's on tonight. You'll see a little TV with uh, what's on tonight written on the TV. So it's pretty simple. Awesome. Steve? I, obviously, I can be heard uh, right here on Panels to Pixels uh, podcast. And uh, again, as I've mentioned before, various voicemails I send to our friends that do uh, do other podcasts. Uh, looking forward to still slaying a Buffyverse podcast coming back, hopefully uh, in a week or so. Uh, and I'll start sending in uh, voicemails to them. And then, of course, the Daryl Diction Show over on uh, the cast of us. They'll be wrapping up uh, this week uh, with the last episode of, of the season for that. For that show, and then uh, probably getting back to the rewatch. Probably uh, they'll probably take a little bit of a break, I would assume, and then uh, come back to the rewatch of The Walking Dead. Awesome. I am honored to say that uh, if you <laughs> listen to when we get our latest episode of What We Do in the Shadows up, there will be a live Steve. Yes, <laughs> I really appreciate it. It was a pleasure. It was my pleasure to do it. All right. Well, as you listeners all know, I could be heard here on panels to pixels also but you could also hear me on other podcasts like adrenaline cinema podcast on the power core entertainment network where i cover action adventure films um, suspense thriller horror all that good stuff everything that gets your adrenaline going uh our friend billy helped me out recently doing long legs we already published friday the 13 part five with our friend jamie dimmick uh Unfortunately, I did not get to do Wolf of 
Dracula 1931 with uh, my friend Ben Elmore. Hopefully we could do that during November. Who cares? This is fun. Dracula's uh, great anytime. So we yeah. we will probably get that done soon, uh, sometime within the next two or three weeks. And then that way I get that out to you. Ben's already watched the movie. He's already got notes. It's just a matter of timing and scheduling. But other than that, uh, you could hear me there as well as when uh, Rob and Adam, Frank, and I come back with Filmtropolis when Rob's ready to record. And uh, there's far more stuff in the future for Adrenaline Cinema Podcast, like uh, the Mayfair Witches, which is coming out in January, I believe. And then what we look to put out as far as movies and things of that nature for you. Uh, I think I spoke to Billy earlier tonight about doing the substance that came out recently with Demi Moore and uh, Dennis Quaid in it and everything else. And because uh, we kind of mentioned it during the long legs review. So you can check that out when that uh, podcast is up. I'm pretty sure by the time you get this, you'll get the long legs one on the trend on cinema podcast. But uh, other than that, uh, that, about rap set for our coverage, but uh, we've mentioned it before for feedback. And obviously you heard Lara's feedback from Facebook. That's a way for you to get in touch with us, which would be facebook.com slash panels, the pixels. We've been putting images on the website or the actual Facebook page saying, leave your comments below. This is how you could send in your feedback. Uh, just send them in. Normally, as you would, you could do it on Facebook Messenger if wanted as well. I still get those. Uh, if you feel that you don't want to send it that way, which is the same as Instagram, by the way, Facebook is Instagram. So I get them both at the same time. But if you feel that you want to send in a direct email, all you have to do is go and send your email to panels to pixels one at gmail.com panels. Two is spelled out to pixels number one at gmail.com. And we'll read that on the podcast when we are on next. It doesn't necessarily have to pertain to what we're covering that week. It could be a past episode that we've done, things that you would like for us to do, any sort of feedback in general. So uh, you could do that. Or, you know, we have these cool new nifty devices out there that you could record yourself, your phone, your iPad or whatnot, your computer. During the pandemic, everybody got a microphone, headphone, all that cool stuff. You could record yourself, send it as an attachment, send it to panels to pixels one at gmail.com. We'll play it. And it's as if you're on the podcast with us. Uh, we also do get feedback through YouTube, which is another place that you can listen to us as well, visually or audibly through YouTube music, which is YouTube podcasts. And uh, literally we'll read them as well. I get, notified as soon as it goes right to the panels to pixels podcast uh you know email through gmail and i can read them and uh i hold on to them everybody but if you're there for uh youtube please subscribe ring the bell and get notified when a new episode drops thumbs up if you like what we do it always helps and uh with as always there's ratings or reviews on apple podcast spotify Please give us a five star if you can. If you don't, I understand. Uh, please leave a comment. That would be greatly appreciated because they do stand out more than anything. It tells us and gives us great criticism. So I'd like to hear your voice on this. So that way, if there's something specific you want us to do, let us know. Very much similar to the email. It gives us a good idea of what you want to hear from us. Do you like this format? Do you want us to change it? Is there something you want to do? Do you want to be on the podcast? Let us know. <laughs> but, well, I think we swept up everything like a witch's broom for Agatha all along, Becky and Steve. <laughs> so I, I think let's grab our brooms and move on down that road. And I just want to thank everyone for listening. I'm Mark. And I'm Becky. And I'm Steve. Same podcast, different panel, different pixel. This was Panels to Pixels podcast. And we'll see you on the next panel. Good night, everybody. Let's go find Tommy. Yeah, good night, everybody. What, what about Ralph Boner? <laughs> <laughs>